All right, Dalton, we're continuing our top 10 positional rankings with the top 10 interior defensive linemen or defensive tackles, as they're better known in college football right now. And man, it was a loaded, loaded group that we were looking at. We have the same guys in our top 10, but uh, this is probably one of the stronger positions we have in college football right now, man. Yeah, you know what? I was I was a little surprised by the depth looking at it now going through this, and, and there's a lot of really good football players. And I'll start with one at number 10, Riley Mills at Notre Dame, man. I'll, I'll tell you, he's as consistent as any player in the country. Week in and week out, he contributes at, at a very, very consistent level, right? And, and it was hard to place him because that consistency is such an asset, right? He could be higher if you like guys that come in bring their lunch pail to work week in and week out. But I'll tell you, an 80.6 overall grade last year, top 20 max in pass rush grade, pressures, true pass rush grade, and pass rush win rate. He's one of the most consistent pass rushers in the country. He's got speed. He's got length. He's got a 92.2 PFF gas score. He's got like a little bit of everything, and he's the perfect complement to Howard Cross's partner inside. 6'5", 300 pounds, gives you just a little bit of everything and brings it week in and week out, an elite player at the defensive tackle position for Notre Dame. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about another Notre Dame defensive tackle uh, pretty soon. We're going to go with another athletic player here, Dawn, and maybe the best name out of anyone in this top 10. That is Tonka Hemingway from South Carolina, who scored in the 99th percentile of our gas score in 2022 and the 94th percentile uh, this past season. So he was a freak athlete. Um, he had the eighth best pass rushing grade among Power 5D tackles this past year at 82.1. Also, he was one of only 10 Power 5D tackles tackles who had 75 plus grades both as a pass rusher and as a run defender so he's still a really good run defender as well um, he's a little undersized he's 295 pounds but he makes up for it man with really good quickness and really good flexibility as well uh, I'm a big fan of Tonka Hemingway right now and I think he's probably one of the more underrated D tackles we have in college football right now yeah, I agree, and I'll tell you, at number eight, I've got another underrated inside pass rusher, man, who had an outstanding year at Duke and Virginia Tech's getting a stud transferring in. That's Aeneas Peebles. Best, he was the second best pass rusher, I should say, in the country on the interior. 90.1 pass rush grade, 33 pressures, six sacks, 16% pass rush win rate. That was fourth. There is a new archetype now, ever since Aaron Donald came onto the scene in the NFL, of smaller defensive tackles who win with athleticism and finesse. And Fe Peebles fits that perfectly, man. I mean, he's not going to be at his size the best run defender in the world, but he's an elite, elite pass rusher. Virginia Tech's getting an absolute animal inside. Peebles, I would argue, is one of the top five pass rushers on the interior in the country. At an outstanding year at Duke, Virginia Tech is going to be the centerpiece of this defense. The rest of the ACC better watch out for this team, man. I'm going to tease it right now. He's the only transfer we have in our top 10. I know a lot of people are hearing that and go, whoa, wait a minute, Walter Nolan not in the top 10? Well, that's how loaded these, these, these tackles were that Walter Nolan just missed out on being a top 10 uh, for us. He might be a first-round pick in next year's draft. Another guy who's being mocked in a lot of first-round mock drafts for 2025, Dalton, uh, checks in here at for us at number 7 in Tyleek Williams uh, from Ohio State. Really flashed as a sophomore in 2022. He had an 82.4 grade that year. It's kind of a rotational piece for Ohio State's defensive line. He was a full-time starter this past season and tied for fourth among Power 5 D tackles with 26 run defense stops. And over the last two years, he is the fourth most valuable returning Power 5 D tackle according to PFF's wins above average metric. I think he's a really, really smart player. He always seems to know uh, what hole to be penetrating in. Uh, pause right there but uh to know where the running back is going but yeah i think uh tyleek williams only 290 pounds man he really played a lot stronger than uh than he was indicated last year and now he's 327 pounds man which is 37 pounds heavier than what he was listed at at least last year um so we'll see how that affects him as a pass rusher because i think uh he certainly could get a lot better as a pass rusher but as a run defender he's probably one of the better ones we have uh in college football right now so tyleek williams checking in here at number seven from ohio state yeah, and to have a player of Williams' caliber at number seven shows you how good this yeah. top ten is. And the next guy has been really, really good for two years in Cincinnati, man. And that's the godfather, Dante Corleone. You know, there was a, there was a question after he dominated the American in Cincinnati's last year in the American in 2022. What's he going to do in the Big 12? Well, he responds with the 12th best overall grade in the country at 83.3. And over the last two years, leads all defensive tackles in overall grade and run defense grade. Corleone's a nose guard who can move around inside a little bit, play any A gap or B gap that you want him to. As good a run defender at any position as there is in the country. 
Needs a little bit more push in the pass rush game to probably get him in the first round conversation. But he's so stout. He's so strong on a good Cincinnati defense. Corleone for two years has absolutely torn up college football against top level competition. And I would expect him to continue to do so this year. The Godfather, man. Maybe the best nickname we got in college football right now. Don Corleone from Cincinnati. Uh, we actually interviewed him last year. So if you want to check out that interview, check it out. Uh, really awesome guy. I actually met up with him. I went to Cincinnati's spring game this uh, this past a couple months ago. Uh, I met up with him afterwards, and uh, he's a really the cool dude. So uh, the Godfather checking in there at number six. At number five is a true sophomore, Dalton. Peter Woods out of Clemson. This guy is an absolute star, and I think he's going to be one of the biggest breakout stars we have in college football. So, he was kind of the number three D tackle for Clemson last year, because obviously you have Ruka Roro and Tyler Davis, who both were drafted in the NFL this past year. Um, even though he was kind of in a rotational row on Clemson's defensive line, he still shined, man. He's a former five-star recruit. He was third among FBS defensive tackles uh, in pass rush win rate at 17.1%, and he was seventh among FBS D tackles in in run defense grade at an 88.6 and he earned an 87.6 overall grade that is the third best we've seen by a true freshman d tackle since we started doing college football in 2014 number one and number two dalton were dexter lawrence and ed oliver who both make over 15 million dollars a year now in the nfl so i think uh peter woods is a breakout star that we're gonna have he's gonna be a household name pretty soon so learn the name peter woods from clemson man he is going to be an absolute superstar and should be already as a true sophomore it feels like a common denominator that all of the elite defenses right like clemson have these big defensive tackles and we'll take it at number four to the, the national champions number four michigan uh, sorry michigan with the number four defensive tackle kenneth grant look I i'm excited because honestly out of this entire top 10 i had the most fun watching Kenneth Grant out of anybody. He is a monster, and it's too long of a nickname for him, but I would call him a center's worst nightmare, man. 78.4 pass rush grade. He's just a huge, huge player, big time in the run game. Third in the power five and pass rush grade when lined up over the center, okay? Only behind Byron Murphy and Aeneas Peebles. Like, he's got this level of athleticism at 330, maybe even 340 pounds, that it's it's weird to see like there's a couple of guys on this list there's, there's different types of freaks and he's one of the big freaks right like just i saw him run down katron allen from about three four yards behind him in the penn state game and i was like what i don't even know what i just watched kenneth grant <laughs> i'll tell you what i don't know if he's gonna rack up the big sack numbers because he's so big but he's disruptive to the pocket he's a monster in the run game and he's a he's got first round pick potential he absolutely does, man. He's not the only Michigan D tackle we're talking about either. So two straight guys, Dolan, who were kind of in a rotation role. Because remember last year, they had Chris Jenkins and Mason Graham uh, on Michigan's D line. And and, and Kenneth Grant was uh, kind of rotated in uh, occasionally. So uh, two guys back-to-back -back in Peter Woods and, and Kenneth Grant, who should be massive breakout stars, I think, in next year. Uh, number three for us is Howard Cross the third, the other Notre Dame D tackle that I uh, previewed or teased a little bit earlier. Um, he was phenomenal this past year, man. In fact, he is the highest-graded returning D-tackle in college football. Uh, he had a 90.1 grade in 2023. The only two who were higher were Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy. And Byron Murphy were was a first-round pick in the NFL draft, and Tavondre Sweat was a top-40 pick uh, in the NFL draft as well. So he was a third-highest-graded D-tackle behind that uh, Texas duo. Um, he... Uh, Tavondre Sweat and Mason Graham were the only D tackles in the country with top 10 grades, both as a pass rusher and as a run defender. Uh, Cross was sec uh, second in the country in run defense stops at 29. He was fifth in the power five with 39 pressures. Now the issue with him and why he might be a little bit lower on draft boards, uh, he's very small, right? He's six foot one, 284 pounds, but he makes up for it with his explosiveness and his agility. And he's a little bit older as always well. a six year player now for Notre Dame. But I mean, if you're just ranking based off college, he is absolutely one of the best D tackles in the country right now. And he should still be probably a pretty relatively high pick in the NFL draft for how productive he's been for Notre Dame's defense. Yeah, I agree. And at number two ahead of him, we're going to go from, we're going to swing the pendulum from very small to very large and go down and see the freakazoid in Lexington, Kentucky. And that's Dion Walker, man. Maybe the best pure pass rusher of any of these guys. He's just a freak. Led the nation with 51 pressures. Led the power five with eight sacks. Only SEC defensive tackle with 80 plus grades in pass rush and run defense. And one of just three power five D tackles with an 80 pass rush grade over the last, across each of the last two seasons 
along with Johnny Newton and Leonard Taylor. And honestly, he's not even a finished product yet, right? 6'6 and 350 last year. Supposedly, he can run a freak 40 time if what he tells you is true. I, I just, this, it, there are going to be teams and scouts that see him and they think they could mold him into the next Chris Jones. That's, that's what I was thinking yeah. about. I'm like, it might be that level of potential with that length and his hand movement and even his athleticism at that size. Deion Walker is an absolute freak for Kentucky's defense. And uh, honestly, the only reason there's one guy ahead of him is because he's already proven he can do it in big spots and he's more fundamentally sound. But Walker's as freaky as any player, not just at this position, but any in the country. Yeah, he's a unicorn, man. And just to tease it, we actually interviewed Deion Walker that we're going to be putting in our Deion Walker breakdown, so be on the lookout for that as well. You mentioned the 40 time, man. He said that he can run in the high four sixes in the four-yard dash at 300... 30 pounds. I think he's about at 330 right now, he, he said as well. Um, the record for an interior defensive lineman is Kalijah Kansi at 467 is the record for a D-tackle. Kalijah Kansi is 70 pounds lighter than Deion Walker. 70 pounds. And he said he could run about the same time as, as the record for a D-tackle. So Deion Walker, if he does that, man, I think, yeah, he's going to be a first-round pick or maybe a top-10 pick, if not higher than that, because of how freaky, freaky he is. But at number one, uh, this should be a surprise to many people. He might even be in, our, in an argument for the best player in college football. That is Mason Graham out of Michigan, who is just such a damn, damn good football player. I mean, there really are is really no holes uh, in his game at all. As a true freshman in 2022, he had an 80.3 PFF grade, which is really, really good for a true freshman. But he took his game to a whole new level this past season, man. He was the fourth most valuable D-tackle in the nation, according to our wins above average metric. He was sixth in the nation with a 16% pass rush win rate. Um, he was also, uh, one of, like I said before, one of only three D tackles in the country with top 10 grades as a pass rusher and run defender with Tavondre Sweat and Howard Cross. Uh, relentless, relentless motor, man. That's really the thing I, I saw most in his game. Ridiculous agility as well. Um, and the thing about him is that when you watch him, you go, oh, he looks undersized because of how well he's moving out there. He's six foot three, 318 pounds. He's got the size as well. So he's got literally everything you'd want. Uh, I think Deion Walker, obviously, with his freaky athleticism, has a probably a higher ceiling, but nobody, nobody has a floor as close to Mason Graham's right now, man. And he is right now the best D tackle in college football and could be a top five or 10 pick in the NFL draft as well, which is how freaky of a player uh, Mason Graham is. But that's what we got for our top 10 defensive tackles in college football heading into the 2024 season. Let us know in the comments whether or not you agree with our list. Drop your top 10s as well. We want to interact with you guys. Uh, and yeah, that's what we got. So be on the lookout for more videos coming out very soon on some of these players and other stuff around college football as we continue previewing the 2024 season.